Hello there, welcome back to another edition of Pimp My Filter. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at what was once in this battered box. This is a filter that was sent to me by a lad called Ben. And this is a Tetra IN1000+. Plus. Now this is an internal filter. It sticks on the side of your tank, draws water in the bottom, goes through two sections, spits back out into the tank. It's got a 1000 litre an hour pump which can be adjusted from 1,000 litres all the way down to 500 litres per hour. It's got an outlet on the top which you can rotate 180 degrees and it's also got an air intake on the top there as well so you can draw air in like a Venturi effect spit bubbles out. However, the propaganda that I've just printed out from one of the online sellers says snap valve shuts off water flow for no mess access to media. I can't find that written anywhere on the box and I can't see anything like that on the filter so I think that's possibly a mistake. Also, comes complete with media and pipe work. Well the only pipe that comes with it is a little clear one that goes on the air intake and there's no media whatsoever in this and no mention of media on the box. I think that's possibly a mistake as well. Basically, what we have here is another sponge filter with a ridiculously powerful pump. There you go. Two sections of foam and when you see what size of foam is in here you'll be quite shocked considering that this is marketed for between 100 to 200 litre tanks. And if you're in the US 100 litres is about 38 US gallons so 200 litres would be 76 US gallons. That sounds like a pretty big tank and what's in here yeah, Hasn't got a cat and else chance of keeping it healthy if you've got a decent stock of fish. So that was the top section. That's the bottom section. That's all we've got in a filter that's supposedly going to keep up to 200 litres healthy. That ain't going to do the job. And that made me think, oh, you know, I can't even put any filter media here. It's possibly going to have to go in bags and and then slot inside there and that's not going to work but these little cartridge things actually come apart so we can do away with this bottom piece for one of our sections now because we need coarse foam in one of our sections I'm actually just going to leave the bottom section entirely as it comes set up I'm not going to do anything with that at all no drilling, no cutting, no hacking just left purely as it is. And the reason I'm leaving this as it is, this bottom section, um, is because it actually does a pretty good job. The water takes quite a path. It's drawn in through the bottom of the filter and also through the back, through there. Travels up here through little holes, then goes through all the foam, up and out the top and into our next section. That's pretty good, certainly good enough as a mechanical side to our filter. So we're going to leave that as it is. No excuses whatsoever for leaving this top section as it is though. And in here, we're going to fill this with filter media and we're also going to improve the water flow through it as well. So let's see how much media we can get in here, allowing space for a little medium foam, which will go in the top. So we'll have filter media in here, a bit of foam, then our cap piece at the top. This is made in exactly the same way as the bio home, but it's made into a gravel form, so it's actually a porous gravel, which is a pretty unique product. Although this stuff was manufactured mostly for making undergravel filters in the likes of the bio orb tanks, it's very good for fitting into awkward spaces like that. See how well that's packed that out. Still allows us to get the foam in the top. So there we go. This actually fits together quite well. You know, it's quite robust. 
reasonably low profile, although this scoop out the front really does eat into this space that we could have for phones and media. And it's not too bad. Because our water comes up here, into this hole, and then around all of this, and then back out here, in there, through all that, out there to our pump. When we've got the foam in, that might just prevent that going in there. So we're gonna cut a lot of little slits along here. And that'll allow the water to come up the back of the filter, through this whole section, and the, the main face of the foam will be what the water hits. So it's not just going to hit a tiny little bit and clog up, it's going to have to hit the big face of foam. Because the main face is bumpy, that gives us a lot of surface area. So it's going to be a while before that gets clogged, especially seeing as the heavy muck would have already been taken out in the bottom section. Now unfortunately, my external mic battery died, but basically this is me getting the Dremel out with a cutting disc and I'm going to cut slits in the back of that section there. To be honest, this was pretty noisy anyway, so it wouldn't have made for a, a very listenable part of the video. But basically I'm just cutting slits in the back of there with the cutting disc, and then I'm gonna clean it up with a sharp, strong knife. There you go, we're just peeling off those molten bits of snotty plastic with a strong, sharp knife. Then I'm giving it a bit of a rub inside to take off any snots inside and that should leave us with a nice clean section. Now just a quick note of when I was using that Dremel a minute ago, you don't have to use a cutting disc, you can drill little holes in if you haven't got a cutting disc or you just don't fancy possibly slipping and making a mess of it. It is more difficult with a cutting disc, easier to drill little holes in. We are going to do one more thing with this particular filter. Because this pump is a bit of a beast, shifting up to a thousand litres an hour and only drawing through two tiny little intakes in the bottom and in the back. We're going to cut some more holes in it to allow it to draw water in from more places. There's quite a few of the reviews I read about this particular filter saying that it sucks fish in and if it's pushing out a thousand litres an hour it's drawing in a thousand litres an hour. And if it's only got two tiny little intakes, that's going to create quite a draw and it is going to suck fish in. So we're going to improve that situation as well. Okay, before we start with the Dremel again to improve the intake to allow it to be a lot more diffused and therefore to prevent it sucking little fish in, just take note there, the little lines coming down here and here. That shows us where the back section fits in. So we're gonna drill all our holes inside of there. And as far as the end cap goes, that sits on our bottom section, we can really just drill anywhere around here. We've got that side, we've got there, there, and that side. So I think we might put some slits in here, some holes in here. The holes will be small though, probably two mil, possibly even three mil. We don't want it too big, because the fish might stick their heads in and get stuck. So we're gonna concentrate on the end cap and also the area underneath here. Slits in here, slits and holes in here. There you go, a few more slits in the bottom of there. And when we're cutting our slits and holes in here, it's careful, you've got to be careful to note that we've got a little raised line along here and one there. That enables this to clip on to the bottom of our bottom section. So we don't want to drill any holes in through that. We want to go between there and the bottom of here. We might just cut two, possibly three slits in there. <laughs> We 
got a lot more intake holes on the bottom there. There you go. Boom. Job's a good one. There we go. There's a lot more places for the water to come through. And that's going to really help to reduce the speed of suction on here and here because there's going to be water coming through here, here, through the sides, through that bottom bit now. It's it's hopefully going to stop fish getting sucked into there. So there you go. Another filter pimped up to the max. Do have a few bits left over but not as much as we've had from previous filters. Got the little cartridge sort of plasticky section thing there. And two of our foams. Not bad. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any filters that you would like to send me to take a look at and improve the biological functions of them, then by all means get in touch. My contact details are in the video description and also in the pinned comment. Don't send me a message through YouTube because quite often they don't come through to me as emails. Comments do, although I do miss maybe 20% of them and have to go looking for them. So your best bet if you want to get in touch is either just to phone me or email me. As I said before, contact details are in the video description. And I'll also put links to this particular filter if you're interested in checking it out. It isn't an expensive filter and once you make a few improvements to it, it's not a bad one as far as internal filters go. I was initially really, really put off by it because I couldn't find a way of doing anything with it until I realised that that top cartridge actually came apart. That made a big difference. That allowed me to do something useful and get some proper filter media into it. If that hadn't have come apart, I would have I would have sent it back as it was, to be honest with you. As it is now, it'll improve the biological function. It'll certainly make the water healthier. And I hope you're pleased with it. If you think this video was good, give it a thumbs up, share it wherever you want, and I shall see you next time. Thanks for watching. Oh, wow. All right.